mighty dwarf kingdoms, long thought diminished, are resurgent under their high king. Hello and welcome to another Total War Warhammer Guide. Today we are looking at some of the Dwarf artillery, the backbone of the Dwarf Empire. It's what the Dwarfs do best. Armour and artillery, I would say, is the single best thing Dwarfs do. Today we're going to look at the cannon. We're also going to look at the flame cannon. Beautiful models again. Um, I think the models this year in Total War have been the best best by a distance they've ever done absolutely spectacular looking and we're going to talk about how they differ and also how to use them in battle so first we're going to look at the cannon and it's if you played any other a lot of the other total war games that have got cannons in them they're pretty much the same there's nothing um, unusual about the dwarf version uh, so we're going to go through them it's armor piercing it's really good at taking down large units or so anything that's a horse or larger it's really good for because but even it says anti-large but i do like it. it's also good 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 against military because you get that sort of skipping bouncing motion of the bomb uh, of the cannon shot that actually ricochets through and can kill a few units but it is very good against those armor troops it's brilliant against giants i'm on the tabletop version um they are the single bane of my arachnorx spider, um, my giants, my trolls, that sort of thing. They just decimate them because they do so much armor-piercing damage. So let's have a look at the unit. You get three cannons for your money. Uh, they're 3,000 hit points. <clears throat> armor is 40. Leadership is 66. All pretty standard dwarfy stuff. Really slow speed. Um, <clears throat> attack and defense is pretty poor, as you'd expect. No charge bonus. They get 22 shots, which is pretty decent. They've got a massive range of 420. 420 hype! Um, and they do 192 missile damage. 100 missile damage and 280 armor piercing. Obviously, with most cannons, a very long reload time, 19.8 seconds. They're dwarfs, so they get 25% magic resist. And they can't run because they're lugging around massive great cannons. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the flame cannon. Now, they work massively differently. So the flame cannon, if you think at the start of the battle with your big dwarven gun line shooting these cannonballs miles away, these are your next step. So once they've got through that rain of cannonballs and grudge throwers and stuff like that, the flame cannons are much shorter range. They don't do armor-piercing damage, and they're anti-infantry. So they, But they just roast units like... It's disgusting <coughs> how much damage they do. So again, unit of three, same sort of stuff. I'm not going to go through all those stats. It's all the same. 25 shots, range of 150 like we talked about, 267 damage. But if you look at the breakdown, because it does area of effect damage, obviously they're fire. So it's 80 damage, 30 armor piercing, expl explosive base damage of 110, and armor piercing of 20 in that. And it's reload time of 9 seconds. So they're a lot quicker as well. Obviously, the, the, the trouble with these is that they have to be a lot closer to you. So, magic resistance 25, like all dwarfs, and they can't run. So, let's stick them on a little gun line. Um, we're up against some little Bretonian dudes. Uh, so, we'll just have them... We won't have them firing at will, so I can actually manually... So, you can always click on a unit if you're not sure to check the range, just to zoom out. And you can even zoom right out, highlight them. The range... The range is ridiculous. You can't even get the range on the fucking screen. You cannot see the range. <laughs> um, that little yellow line at the front is also minimum range because they do have a minimum range. So we're, they're already in range. They were pretty all, much already in range when we started. So they've opened up their first cannibals. So these are just basic um, units, basic spearmen and arms and stuff like that. And uh, so they're not... It's not a very good target for these guys. They could go after the hero, but we want to see some damage to units. So we're going to see this. Get another volley in. So with all cannon, you kind of know how to use these. These are part of your main line. If you can get up a hill, that's even better. So they can shoot all over your own troops. In go in another couple of cannonballs. Obviously, even if you don't do the most damage, morale is massive. You do a massive amount of morale damage with any sort of artillery. Um... So the idea is you soften them up with the cannons, pick off a few maybe of the heavy armoured units or even just slow them down, uh, soften them up for when your other troops get in range. But these, the idea of this gun line here with our little mini gun line is that once they get close enough, the flame cannons then open up. And the idea is you don't particularly want to get charged. So the idea is that these flame cannons will kind of finish the unit off. Their morale is already low from the cannon. We're going to send in the flame cannons to do some disgusting amount of damage here which they're about to do any second now. Not the quickest, 
in the world. There we go. There we are. We're shots away, far away. And as you'll see, scary amount of damage, um, scary amount of morale. They've almost broken here straight away. Oh, the hero just almost. Yeah, the heroes. <laughs> Some random dude just took a one to the face. Oh, they're all going after my hero. Run away! As another shot goes in. <clears throat> So with flame cannons, you can have them quite far back on a hill because they, they've got that massive range, um, which is what I'd suggest to do. With the flame cannons, they're a little bit more vulnerable because they have to be much closer. But what I'd do is I'd have them in the front of my army, but I'd have almost the, my line of warriors, like literally right behind them. So as soon as that enemy, I get off my last shot with my flame cannons, I'm going to charge in with my units to cover them. They don't really want to be in combat. Um, they might win just because we've narrowed them down so much here. Oh, this is going to get ugly. Obviously, the trouble with um, getting into combat with these is they can't fire anymore, obviously. And uh, they're okay because they're dwarfs, so they're still decent at fighting, but compared to other artillery units. Um, but they still, obviously, will struggle. My personal favourite, I just love cannons, because I love the fact that you can do a massive amount of damage um, from a distance. So you can really soften up the enemy before it gets anywhere close to you. Flame tank, flame cannons take a bit more getting used to because of that massively short range. Uh, they're a little bit more vulnerable. But as you saw, they do do terrible amounts of damage. Like, just disgusting amounts of damage. One thing I will note is that um, I find that using the flame cannons... I just probably have one unit of flame cannons in my army. Um, I don't really want to have a big long line of flame cannons. Um, it's personal preference. I think you, you can get away with both. Um, if you had a, three units of flame cannons, it could be a scary amount of damage. But the biggest thing, obviously, is if they get cat charged by, let's say, some Reichsguard Knights, the flame cannons don't do any armor-piercing damage. So they're, they're, they're going to hurt the morale, but they're still going to get charged by those Reichsguard Knights. That's the biggest thing for me. So there you go, guys. There's my mini little guide on the cannons. Um, use them and destroy faces and see your opponents cry because uh, they do scary amounts of damage. So it, they're a must for every Dwarf army, especially for me, the cannons. I love those big long-range cannons. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.